Are you one of those rare people who has not had a contentious conversation with someone about politics? How about somebody close to you? How about your spouse? When it comes to politics, my husband and I agree on very little. Hi, I'm Dr. Jan Anderson. I'm a psychologist in private practice, and I specialize in working with executives and professionals, including their spouses and families. Here's the good news. Our political views have not changed, but how we handle our differences in our political views has changed. And that's a good thing. And it was not easy. And I'm a marriage therapist. I know the research. I know that, that if you begin a conversation on a negative note, there's a very good chance it's going to end on a negative note. In fact, there's a very strong statistic to back that up. Marriage researchers can watch a couple interacting and predict within three minutes whether it will end well. And what they're basing that uh, prediction on is whether it starts with a negative note. And they can predict it with 96% accuracy. So I know that. My question is, what if you're not aware of how much something bothers you that your spouse thinks or says? What if you're not even aware of how negative you uh, are actually feeling? and it's too late, you're, you're already rolling. The first time that I ever had an experience of not being triggered by something like that, it changed everything. There were three things that I did differently that made a difference, but here's the situation that led up to the triggering because it was such a small thing. That's what's weird about it. The triggering happened when I happened to walk past our TV and my husband was watching the news and on the screen, which I had to walk very close by, was uh, a political figure that I find very polarizing. So I just kept walking. Um, I got around the corner out of the room and I paused. And the first step in this little practice is to acknowledge what's going on and how painful it is. So here's this little thing. I saw somebody I don't like. I kept walking, left the room, got around the corner, had a little privacy, and it's like, what's going on with you? Well, what was going on with me is I was much more affected by that than I realized. I paused and noticed what was happening physically in my body, and to my surprise, my heart rate was up, my hands were a little trembly, and most interesting of all, I felt my nostrils flare. <sighs> like that, like an animal. I mean, we're talking about going totally instinctual. So that was surprising, and it's like, wow, you are really affected by this, aren't you? So that was acknowledge the discomfort, it, because it felt awful. And I, and I literally said that to my, this feels awful. That's step number one, acknowledge the pain. Step number two is acknowledge your common humanity. So I kind of, because I'd been practicing it, I somehow rather easily flowed into the very next step. And what I said to myself is, Jan, there are people all over the country that are experiencing what you're experiencing right now and with what you are experiencing with you and your husband. You are not the only one. This is not unusual. You are not alone. And then the next step, the third step, I actually didn't even have to go into, which is really interesting. The third step is to offer yourself some kind of help right now, right away. And obviously I'm not saying you solve the problem immediately, but you do offer yourself some kind of help in that moment. Well, what I found is, you know, steps one and two already had offered me pretty much of what I needed. You know, I saw what was happening, I acknowledged it, I acknowledged that it's not just me, and I just walked on back into the house and, you know, waited a few minutes, did something, went about my business. I come back into 
the room where my husband is. And here's what was different. In the past, if I had not done those two steps I just described, I would have come back into the room, but I would have been looking for a fight and I wouldn't even have known it. I would have been triggered. I would have been agitated in some way. And I can guarantee you, I would have come back into the room and one way or the other, basically picked a fight. That was big. I came back into the room. He's still there. He doesn't even know anything has happened. I don't say anything. He doesn't know anything. And that was it for that iteration. Now, we did end up talking about that later, and I described what was happening for me, but it wasn't even necessary to go back and cover it in that moment. In fact, it would have been better, it was better that we didn't. Here's what's most important about my ability to do, to do that new and different thing. That's a skill that can be learned, and it's gonna take some practice, and you're probably gonna need some help. In other words, this is the kind of thing you can't just read it or tell yourself you're gonna do it and magically be able to do it. It is skill building, it is training like any other kind of skill that you might learn. So if you're interested in learning how to not get triggered and how to make your conversations go better, here's how you could get started. In the next screen, I'll share with you three questions that I like to use in a free 15 minute telephone consultation. It's a way that we can quickly figure out, am I the right helping professional for you? Here are the three questions.